young professionals out there, you know who you are. You're the ones who live in the city, maybe the suburbs, and commute to work. Not only do I know you, I'm related to some of you. Well, off and on over the years, when people have contemplated leaving the city for a more rural way of life, I have heard two primary complaints, shopping and the number of miles from a city. Oh yes, it's generally the women who wonder, where am I going to shop? Well, fortunately, with the onslaught of online shopping, that question has been addressed. Heavens, even people in the city use the internet instead of facing the mall or a drive across town. And speaking of driving, I personally know people who spend three hours of their day just getting to work. I can't even conceive of it. And no, they don't live 180 miles from their job. You see, I think that city people get very distracted by miles. Greensburg is 100 miles from the nearest airport? Yes, it is, but it's also a hundred minutes. How many of you who live in the city spend an hour and a half getting to the airport? If you're honest, quite a few of you do. What you need to understand is that in the Midwest, miles equals minutes. I heard a comedian joking that he arrived at an airport in Kansas at 8 o'clock and his show started at 8 and he made it. Well, okay, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but it is certainly not an exaggeration to say that I can think of no one who wants to spend a total of five hours a day just getting to and from work. Of course, this comes from the person who has to drive halfway across town to work, and I feel impatient if it takes longer than 90 seconds. We have some of those young professionals with us today, like I was talking about earlier. But these are people who have intentionally chosen to live a rural lifestyle. And from my heart, I have to tell you that I have so much admiration for them. Some of this age group remained in Kiowa County after the big wind, and others moved here afterward because they also wanted to be part of the answer, part of the force who had become instrumental in breathing new life into our town. Their commitment, like all commitments, has come at a price, but they are working together and creating a synergy that is bound to make a profound impact on Kiowa County. Many of these young professionals have joined forces and are putting their creative ideas into an organization called Power Up. To be honest, we're already feeling its effects. After the break, Stacy Barnes will be joining us to give us more insight into just what the Power Up movement is and why we should be excited that Kiowa County is involved in this big idea. Come back and hear all about it. The internet has drastically changed the way we communicate. Are you keeping up with the times? The Kiowa County Media Center can connect you with viewers in markets all over the region, the state, and the world. Our technology keeps us on pace with the high demand of internet video content. Bring your audience from anywhere in the world to your wedding, conference, sporting event, concert, and much more. No one does high quality video streaming like us. We are the Kiowa County Media Center, leading the new age of communication. Hi, we're back with Stacy Barnes. She is the Director of Tourism for the City of Greensburg and sits on the Board of Directors of our 547 Arts Center. Stacy has brought the idea of Power Up back to Greensburg. Where did you hear about it? What is it? I first heard about this idea. It's a concept of the Kansas Sampler Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I go to a lot of their different meetings throughout the year with tourism. And I heard about it a couple years ago. And the idea is to bring together younger people in communities to work together and help do things that are positive in the community. And that's really the, the one rule of it. Doesn't positive pretty much underscore the, yes. the whole concept of Power Up? Exactly. And I think the Kansas Sampler Foundation, too, a lot of their mission and goals is about being positive in our rural communities. And really, that's the one rule we have in Power Up, is that you have to be positive. <laughs> and not to say that sometimes we don't discuss that challenges. That might really be about the only rule a lot of groups would need to be more effective. Yes. Um, not that we don't discuss challenges, but we really try to find solutions or positive things out of it. As opposed to just complain. Yes. Come to the table with an idea of how mm -hmm. you might 
address the problem. Exactly. And I think we have enough um, complaining and venues for that. And I think that you can't move forward and, and be positive and have change unless you can really come up with some kind of solution that is positive instead of just complaining. So you heard about Power Up through mm -hmm. the Kansas Sampler organization and then you brought it back to Greensburg and then how did you introduce it? Like how did you get it from an idea to action? I just started talking with a few people in town and said, hey, I'm wondering about starting this in Greensburg. What do you think? And I think that there was kind of a need in the last few months of um, people needing to feel like there's something good going on in the mm -hmm. community. And feeling and empowered. Exactly. And so I talked with a few of my friends and some other people and thought, what do you think about this, you know? And we had our first get together, I think it was in April and really informal and just started talking about things. We had about 25 people, I think, at our first mm -hmm. meeting and talked about challenges we saw in the community, but also good things that we saw going on and how we could build upon those. And we've had several different get-togethers since then. We had a potluck evening dinner, and some of it, it's, it's about um, the social aspect, too, just for this age group to get together and talk with people that they normally don't yeah, interact with. Yeah, I don't with. care. Uh, that is really important because I don't care what people say about social networking. Mm -hmm. I think that people really do long to connect with other people and to get out of their house mm -hmm. and to see and do. I know anytime we've had anything at our house, it Absolutely. really it doesn't matter. Don't worry about dusting. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about any of those details, all the reasons why you think you can't do or you right. can't have or you shouldn't bring people in. And people just stay. I think people, you are, to, you are totally right. Mm -hmm. People are so hungry to make connections with people beyond just social media. That's right. And I think our age range right now, because we're the younger demographic and I'm a little bit older on the older end of it, but <laughs> we grew up with the internet and email and then Facebook and other social media and so much happens on our phones or whatever now. And to be able to have that personal interaction with people in our community that mm -hmm. we maybe see at the store on a weekly basis, but we don't really get to know and know who they are and work together um, to move our community forward. And so it's really about that too. And I have to say, like you are like the other guests that we have today and a lot of other people in the community, you're in that age range that made the conscious decision to come back mm -hmm. because um, as some of you may or may not know, Stacy and her husband Travis grew up in this community, left, got their college educations, married each other's high school sweetheart and came back to Greensburg at probably, you know, what some might think would be the worst possible mm -hmm. time. We had the tornado. Were you planning? I've always wondered this. Were you planning prior to the tornado, you and Travis, like, how about we go back to Kiowa County? Or was that a, oh boy, do they ever need us now? Let's go back. I don't think it was really something we thought about um, before the tornado. We were living in Lawrence at the time of the tornado. We'd gone to K-State and then moved to Lawrence for a job. I got there and we're living there and just what had happened here coming back and being a part of my parents cleaning up and being a part of some of the community meetings and feeling that town pride mm -hmm. and wanting to be here and be a part of what was going on. I think for me, I can't speak for my husband so much, but um, that's what really drew me to being here and to being a part of everything that's gone on in the last seven years and to say, you know, I was here for that. And 25 years from now. And you weren't now, just here, you were an active, vital part of that. Mm -hmm. I, I think so a little bit. You but, are. Um, you are. And that's and what you I think about be. a rural community. Um, you have such a chance to make a big impact. You know, in a bigger city, if we were still living in Lawrence, I, we loved it there and I'm sure we'd be very happy. Um, it's a much bigger town and the cultural scene and everything. We loved it there. But here in a rural community, I think the chance for your impact to really be felt mm -hmm. is so much greater. And the you little know, things that you right. can do on a daily basis that can impact your community and help to move it forward, I think it's just um, the satisfaction of that is so great. Well, we're going to have the opportunity to 
talk more in depth with the people that you inspired and encouraged to become part of Power Up. I hope I inspired them. <laughs> well, they're here, so you must have. I, I really don't want this to be my I know, thing. I know, and I know. But I really... you did bring the idea, and you do know the background of Power Up mm -hmm. and how it came to be, and then how it came to be in Greensburg. And so we're going to have an opportunity to talk with with some of those Power Up members <laughs> later in the in the show, and hear just what they're doing um, on a very practical day-to-day, week-to-week level to make Power Up a reality and the uh, allow the community to feel the positive effects of of the Power Up decision to be part of Greensburg and of Kiowa County. Absolutely. Thank you, Stacy, Thank you. for being here. We really appreciate it. Glad to. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, welcome back to Sit Down with Susan. We're fortunate enough to have with us several members of our local Power Up organization. Starting to my right at the end of the table, we have Stacy Barnes, Aaron Zagina, Julie Keaton, Peter Kern, and his wife Haley Kern. And uh, what I really appreciate about each one of these people is that they have made a conscious decision to stay in Greensburg to stay remain in Kiowa County. Some of them made the conscious decision to move here even after the tornado and make Greensburg their home even though we're, we're going through growing pains and our community continues to evolve and so I really respect that decision. But in regard to Power Up, Haley, why did you and Peter decide to get involved? Um, I think we chose to be involved because it was we, we fell in the age parameters and it was something that we Which could I do. did not, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we haven't kicked anyone out. We don't card at the door or any of you that. You don't? No. Okay. But um, we could do this together. You know, mm -hmm. he's involved with things through the school, and I... I've and you're involved in city council. You're on several boards and councils, aren't you? Yes. Um, city council, tourism. I serve on boards at the church. Um, I like being involved, and this was just one other area that I could be involved, but he could join me and be positive. Something and, that you could do as a couple. Yes, and to and to be with other young couples in the community. And have you enjoyed it so far? So far it's been a very positive experience. Good. What do you like about it, Peter? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything? Yeah, I love it. Everything. You have really got that try to be positive all the time down pat. I just like spending time with my wife together. <laughs> <laughs> you had to go to power up meetings to do that. Uh, <laughs> well, you do have a couple of children, so maybe that is true. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that might be a possibility. And Peter is our school's <laughs> industrial arts teacher, who I respect the fact that he has remained because as and he has a, does an excellent job. He's a beautiful craftsman and has had, I'm sure, ample opportunities to work outside the school system. And, and we are really, really, truly, we are blessed that you are part of our faculty. <laughs> <laughs> Julie. It's not fair to go to me next after that. I know. Nobody <laughs> wants to talk after Peter. It's been that way for years. I'm not the least bit surprised. Are you and Wayne both in Power Up? Your husband, Wayne? Yes, we both joined at the same time. Um, it gives us an opportunity to be involved together, like they said, but mm -hmm. also to find areas that we're both good at or that we're interested in. Um, and it keeps us both informed as to what we're doing. It kind of makes it easier to be supportive because you know what's going on. And Julie is our pharmacist here at our hospital in, in Greensburg. And you and Wayne have lived in Greensburg how long? Two years. Two years. And so this also probably gives you an opportunity to have an avenue to meet other people that are around your age and, and create some bonds with them and other young parents as well. It's nice for that aspect. It's, it's also nice being a new member of the community and not 
not knowing backgrounds and not knowing what's going on and um, or where to even find information about what's going on it's nice to be able to get plugged in and see what are areas that are already happening what are things we can do and be involved with and then what are some things that we might be able to add something to the table Erin I know that power up is more than just an idea I think that as an organization you've already done some activities here in Kiowa County what are some of those so far um, I mean it hasn't been you know going on too long mm -hmm. um, the, the main thing that is has been taking place recently would be Julie and <clears throat> some of the other members taking on the 4th of July activities uh, that are coming up this coming weekend um, a lot has went into that as far as fundraising and stuff like that mm -hmm. too um, you know as everybody was kind of aware Mullenville used to t or kind of took that thing on and mm -hmm. and then um, you know got burnt out or whatever and didn't really want to have that we didn't want to host the event anymore so um, some of the members thought that we should go ahead and take that over if, if and you've had some really <laughs> good ideas like to help uh, fundraise I know that there was um, during the weekend Haley I know you organize a big um, garage sale mm -hmm. community-wide garage sale one weekend in May and uh, wasn't there working with the senior center you could drive through get your biscuits and gravy so that you didn't have to go without breakfast in order to get around all the garage sales and just drive through pick them up and on to the next event so I thought that was a great idea because that's always an issue yeah and that's really what I think the group is is a bunch of forward thinkers I guess with different mm -hmm. ideas and a place to plug them in so I mean they sold um, Krispy Kreme donuts on the weekend of the um, How did I miss the Krispy Kreme donuts? <laughs> I think I was out of town. So on, it. On, on Memorial Weekend when they had the um, stuff oh, the on arts and crafts the, the arts and crafts fair on Main Street, they sold Krispy Kreme donuts that weekend. Mm -hmm. Raised pretty good funds then, and and then the drive-through biscuits and gravy. I mean, who would I'm telling you, who I think that that, that, the food so. theme, the food theme, really seems to be working for we'll, you. We'll, we'll probably keep tapping into that as much as we can. It seems to be making. I it, think that that's a win-win. <laughs> So, we like the food you're making money very good that's a good idea all the way around <laughs> so but i mean that that's been the the main thing so far other than just kind of get togethers and getting this thing headed in a direction that everybody's comfortable with i guess would has been the focus uh, and your so wife far. nicole is part of this as well isn't yeah, she yeah <clears throat> it also gives us a chance to i mean even as a family we, most meetings where it's young couples have kids or whatever they have daycare provided uh -huh. <laughs> we uh, Stacy tries to set that up so oh, that, that, is nice. that helps a ton I mean we're each of us individual are involved in so much stuff exactly this is an avenue to plug all that in together a little bit so that that helps Nicole and I a bunch just because well you don't have to arrange for a sitter you can take yeah. your kids I mean, they get I, to play with everybody else's kids I think that's it, like I, I go to golf board meeting or something and I'm there for two hours and she's at home with the kids by herself or <laughs> she goes to the daycare board meeting and is there for a couple hours and I mean, yeah. this way we're, we're at a place there. together and with uh, high school girls or whoever. Your kids are being taken care yeah, of. It just, it's a comfortable atmosphere for sure that way. So. Now, I've heard something about yellow cards. Stacy, what's that about? The yellow cards is something, again, that came out of the Kansas Sampler Foundation. A couple of meetings that I've been to that they've used just like in soccer volleyball whatever that if you feel like the conversations are veering towards less than positive <coughs> um you can either self-card which i think is mostly <laughs> what has gone is on people right? preemptively have said okay i'm gonna need this <laughs> and then they say what they're gonna say but i think it's been a way to keep everybody headed in that positive direction in our conversations and i think it's it's been really effective i don't think we've really honestly needed to use it mm -hmm. um, more in joking i think is when it's been used more than anything and people have carded themselves but no red cards yet nobody's got kicked <laughs> out yet oh that there are there are cards other than yellow no we haven't got to red cards yet <laughs> oh good, good hopefully we don't hopefully get to that there point. will be no need for the yellow <laughs> yeah. for the red card yeah i think that's a great idea um just the meetings i've been to in my life a lot of times that's where the conversations get sidetracked and then you don't get anything done because everybody gets so focused on uh, yeah I didn't like that either and what about this and remember that time when and so I just think that's a great idea to keep the meeting moving forward and 
on track and a lot less time wasted on issues that are in the past and don't exactly. make any, any difference in the moment anyway. Because we can't change what's already happened. Exactly. So we can just move on and, and figure out ways to make the future better. Exactly. Um, I was talking to a businessman yesterday and we talked about the fact that since the tornado, really, we are a younger community than we were before. And I think Power Up and each of you are representative of that, that we have this faction of young parents and young professionals that you're here and you want something to do and you want a better community for your kids. So I really, really appreciate what you do, the time that you invest. I know that it's limited because you all had children. You're, and as you each mentioned, you're, you all sit on boards, you're on committees, you have enormous list of things that you need to do. So on behalf of Kiowa County, I thank you for the time that you invest in Power Up and we look forward to um, lots more activities and energy from all of you. And, and certainly I think that uh, we wanna get the word out there because I don't think everybody knows that there is an organization called Power Up in Greensburg yet, and we sure want to turn that around. What's nice about this group is we're not, we don't have meetings, we don't have bylaws, we don't have, we don't have to vote on You're things. not confined by all right. of that. And for some of us, it's very easy to be involved in an organization or just say, I want to be on this board or this committee. You know, for some people, that's not an easy choice, but to see some of their friends doing it and to know that they can come and have dinner with us or just come and check out a get together. We call them get togethers, not meetings. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah, we can plug in a lot I hate more meetings, people. so I yeah. love the word get together. So I think more people feel comfortable coming to that to sit down and have a conversation versus, you know, I'm going to go to this meeting. Committee, committee meeting and, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit more laid back. Well, for ha being a laid back group, you really are getting things done and we appreciate it. And we hope that anytime you wish to come back and talk about what you're doing and, and how Kiowa County needs to get involved and is getting involved, we hope you know that you have a standing invitation. So thank you each for being here today. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye. 4-H is a unique organization. It is the only youth development organization with oversight and sponsorship by the federal government. Through the 4-H educational mission, we help youth to learn by doing and to lead by example. In 4-H, we are committed to providing a positive experience for as many young people as possible. Not just with the belief that 4-H grows great kids, but the belief that by preparing our youth for school, work, and life, that we are contributing to a vibrant economy for years to come. There are currently two traditional 4-H clubs in Kiowa County with over 40 members. 4-H is open to anyone between the ages of 7 to 19, and the Clover Bud Program is open to those youth 5 to 7. Interested in learning more about 4-H? Please contact us at 620-723-2156. Or come on by the Kiowa County Commons and visit us inside the Kiowa County Extension Office. So join the club. Together we can grow great kids across Kansas. Hi, welcome back to Sit Down with Susan. And we have real live musicians with us today. We have Jeremy Spring in this chair right here and his uh, music partner, Nick Patrick. And they are from the band. They are the band, really. They are the band, Abandoned Kansas. There's a lot of bands in there. There is. <laughs> the I, band, Abandoned. A band, a band, a band. And are you going to? Uh, yes, actually soon. <laughs> Really? Yeah. We, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's been the joke the whole time. Every state we leave and people are like, you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> because but, you have yeah, and the, abandoned Kansas. But now we're really going to move. We've called Wichita home for a while, but we are about to move soon. But it's funny you say that, but that's not the news we're here to talk about, I don't think. But we are abandoning Kansas soon. Well, I tell you, that's sad for Kansas because you two... I, I am positive, make really great music. How did you start singing? Was it always just the two of you, or what? We've gone through a lot of different mm -hmm. musicians over the years. A band in Kansas has been a band for seven, eight years now. Oh. And a few of us met at Friends University in Wichita. Mm -hmm. And despite the name, I know it sounds like we don't like Kansas. We really do like Kansas. Okay, because I, I was a little hurt. <laughs> I thought maybe yeah. you really did. No, no we stayed we, here for our entire 
lives. <laughs> yeah. Did you grow up in Kansas? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so my roommate in college thought it'd be funny to have a band name that sounded like a band in Kansas, but was a band in Kansas. So it just stuck, the joke from college. <laughs> and we started writing our own songs and put out an album in 2007. Oh, wow. And then we've been touring full time since then, going coast to coast and had a couple a couple chances to go to some other countries and play. And uh, we've played like 1,500 shows now. Oh, under my. A band in Kansas. So we're actually... Uh, um, it's slowed down a little bit. Like I said, we're getting married and doing some other music projects too, but this one's still going too. That's great. And where's your next stop? Uh, uh, coming up this a week from today, we hit the road and get in the van again. We haven't toured this year yet, and we're on the road from July 30th through August 30th, uh, a whole month long run with like 28 shows, I think. So pretty much playing every night. We're going to do the whole east half of the U.S. and up north and a couple festivals. Well, you know, I know this isn't ha this isn't like band information, but from a girl's perspective, you did just get married. Now, do your wives go with you on these trips, or <laughs> did you just question. like um, <laughs> at the altar? I do. I'm gone. See you in the fall. It is kind of mean. Get married, go on a honeymoon, and then I dropped her off at home, and I'm about to leave for a month. <laughs> right. I don't know. What did, what did Shauna say? Well, my wife's a mom, and so she's she stays home and takes care of her girl. And we yes. met. She lives in California. I'm from Kansas, and um, so they're moving here. She's used to not seeing you. Is that what right? You're right. We've been 1,200 miles apart for most of our relationship. So it's like this is nothing it's compared nothing to new. yeah. It's nothing new. I'm sharing a very small one-bedroom apartment with my wife and her dog. And uh, <laughs> I I'm noticed that you haven't quite you have not quite graduated to the our dog right. stage. Right. No, it's her dog. <laughs> well, the next dog will be our dog. But I'm really getting into a similar size space in this van. So uh, for You're me, it's not it. much different. It's about the same. I think she's ready no for me to water. get out. Maybe a week into it, we'll miss each other. But she is actually going to come along for a few of the days. But I don't th know if the road is really that glorious of a place. I don't yeah. know what girl would really want to live. No, I don't either. small of quarters with a bunch of guys. Yeah. Yeah. And is it, will it just be the two of you or will there be more people or? What we played here today was just acoustic of me and Nick, and Nick on bass, but live we have a full band with a drummer and another guitar player and it's like a regular rock band. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We do a lot of things. We do festivals and we'll do churches and we'll do nightclubs and we'll do military bases and backyard barbecues and some of everything. So oh, wow. we'll be all over the place. So you don't have a particular genre? I wouldn't say so. We kind of, we've kind of able to be versatile like that and put, make our music kind of fit whatever event we're at. It's been a lot of fun that way. Well, I'm pretty sure that people are eager to hear your sound, and I think they're going to like it a lot. Thanks. I really do. So if you will just stick with us a little bit longer, you're going to get to hear Abandoned Kansas too, right before they actually do <laughs> Abandoned Kansas. The weather just seemed a little bit unusual. The sound just deafening. You can hear and feel things just breaking up. School was gone. You. My church was gone. My town was gone. What are we going to do? We could rebuild. We could start over and rebuild a whole community. Let's rebuild the town. Let's work together. Let's try to do it right. The spirit of the community, we will rebuild. Maybe we do have to do it different. To be able to make a difference that can be felt for generations, it's very exciting. Come and experience the story in Greensburg. Two, one, two, three. Oh, 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 oh. When the lights go, lights go down, it's electric in this place. Let's go, let's go now, we can take back. What's at stake? We are the underdogs, or so we have been told. We're not going home till you turn it to gold. Take the darkest part of me and turn it to gold. Color in the heart of me, shines brighter, taking me higher.
mistakes We're not stuck here, out of luck here We can break out of the grave Down to the wire Our faith is never cold You start a fire and turn it to gold Take the darkest part of me and turn it to gold Color in the heart of me Shines brighter, taking me higher Let's go, let's go down, it's electric, can you feel it? Let's go, let's go down, it's electric, can you feel it?